Removing objects in Photoshop has drastically changed over the last few years. It is much cleaner, much easier and does things which were impossible before. But there are a few decisions we need to make for the best results and we'll master those through 5 simple examples. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop and if you want to go ahead and download any of these photos and follow along, you know what to do, check the links in the description. If you want to remove simple stuff like this trash can right here, just select the remove tool. Now if you cannot see the remove tool, you want to make sure your Photoshop is updated to the latest version. If you have already updated and still cannot find the remove tool, click on the three dots, go to edit toolbar and you want to make sure it's not in the extra tools section. If it is, just drag it and drop it right here so you can see the remove tool. Once you're done, click on done. Now once we select the remove tool, for simple stuff, you can keep generative AI turned off at the top. I always recommend that you create a brand new layer and you check sample all layers so it can sample from the other layers. And then you can check remove after each stroke. What that does is that it allows you to loop around the thing that you want to remove let go and it automatically removes that super fast. So that's how to remove simple stuff. You can keep generative AI turned off for faster results. You want to create a brand new lab and check sample all layers. Now what about complex objects where we have to recreate certain things? For example, there's a photo bomb right here in this fantastic portrait. Let us create a brand new layer first with the same remove tool selected. If we were to keep generative AI turned off and if we try to remove it, by the way, you can use the square bracket keys to make the brush larger or smaller. Let's just loop around this subject that we wish to remove, like so. Now this might be quick, but this is nowhere accurate. This is just crazy bad. So for cases like this, I do recommend turning on Generative AI. Let's go back by pressing Control or Command Z. Let's turn on Generative AI. We're going to get to other options later. Sample all layers is fine. We are on a new layer. Remove after each stroke is turned on. Just loop around the subject again. Now this time it's going to take a little more time but the results are going to be so much better. Have a look at it. Here's the before, here's the after. And now since it's on a separate layer, we have a lot of flexibility. Now keep in mind every time you use Generative AI, it does count against your credits. Depending upon the plan you're on, Adobe gives you a set number of credits every month and it counts against that. For example, right now for me, it shows that I have 1484 credits left out of 1500. If I were to go back to Photoshop with Generative AI turned on, let's say we applied it in this area again, let's see what happens. And now that is removed, if I refresh the credits, have a look, 1483. It cost me one credit, but it also shows when you're running low on credits, continue generating content at no additional cost for now. I don't know what will happen in the future, but this is what it is right now. Now let's say you want to remove this photobombing bird, but you don't want to do it all at once. You want to take your time to draw strokes one at a time. For those situations, you can uncheck remove after each stroke. Also, if you're not sure whether you want to use generative AI or not, you can let Photoshop make the decision for you by setting the mode to auto, which may or may not use generative AI. And then create a new layer. Let us not forget that. You can draw strokes one at a time. It won't automatically remove it if you let go. That's what remove after each stroke means. So I'm going to make a selection of this. There you go. It's full. Once you're done, hit enter or return. If it is taking longer, just understand that Photoshop is using generative AI. And there you go. This is just incredible. Now there is a line right here. And for those areas, you can just turn off generative AI and just fix those manually. It's not doing anything because remove after each stroke is turned off. So you will have to hit enter manually. So after you're done, you can check remove after each stroke for future projects. Let's have a look at the before and after. Here is the before. Here is the after. Totally improves the image. Now there are many advancements in removing objects and distractions where you don't even have to make a selection. For example, in this case, let us create a new layer. Let's not forget that. And here there is a find distractions option. Click on that and click on people. It automatically selects all the distracting people except for the main subject right here, the hero of the image. However, the selections may not be perfect. As you can see, some areas are left out. So for those areas, carefully add the missing parts. Similarly, right here as well. Once you're done, for this example, I think it's a bit more complex. So we are going to turn on Generative AI, make sure sample all layers is checked and just hit enter or return. That's it. And just like magic, all gone. So darn cool. And you can turn off Generative AI. There's that red thing right there. Let's remove it. Make a selection. Gone. So here's the before. 
here's the after. Now keep a lookout for the edges. There might be errors here. So as you can see in this case, what is happening right there? So let's try to remove that, but it's not that good. Let's try turning on generative AI and then we'll try that again. There we go. The results are so much better now. Have a look at the edges right here. It's perfectly fine and this works before, after. Now there are also situations where the objects you want to remove are just so many or just too complex. For example, the wires in this case. First of all, let us create a brand new layer and then let's set the mode to automatic for this one. Click on find distractions, wires and cables. You want to make sure sample all layers is checked. Now this time it won't let you modify those selections. It'll automatically do everything for you. Done. And this my friend is just so darn good. You cannot even tell where the wire was. Here's the before, here's the after. Similarly, let's take a look right here. Here is the before, here is the after. So good. So that's how to remove objects, distraction, people, photobomb, wires and cables, everything in Photoshop. The remove tool changes the game. Photoshop keeps updating like this and it's important we keep ourselves updated. And if you want to master Photoshop from start to finish and beyond with updated tutorials, definitely check out Piximperfect Pro. We have over a hundred lessons, unlimited content designed to take you step by step into Photoshop mastery. Where we master Photoshop by learning the concept so you never have to memorize the steps. Check out the ultimate way to master Photoshop only on Piximperfect imperfect.com. For 99% of the time, the remove tool does best, but there are those specific scenarios where you may want to use the good old clone stamp tool. If you wish to learn more about it, you can watch this video. Thank you so much for watching this one. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.